This is the World Report of The Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints, April 2023. Coming up, a contribution from the church to a Navajo community brings electricity and the gift of light. From free throws to free meals, NBA All-Stars visit the Bishop's Storehouse to serve families in need. But first, taking on the world hunger crisis, a $32 million donation brings refugee families hope, food, and peace. My name is Habib Isaac. We came from uh, Somalia by foot. We spent 15 nights on the road just to get to this place. As a global food crisis forces millions into hunger, the work of the United Nations World Food Program is a critical lifeline for many. Millions of people in dozens of countries rely on the organization's food, nutrition, and livelihood support. In September, the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints gave the World Food Program a $32 million donation to help fight the world's seismic <laughs> hunger crisis. My situation is good. I'm very happy because I was able to receive food in a short period. Mohammed also came from Somalia. His mother is blind and his father is disabled with several health challenges. He has goals that can change the course of his life. Because of um, my wish to become a doctor is because I would want to give back to my community. The food we receive helps us to sustain our cooking and the family. I'm able to go to the refugee camps and ensure that the refugees are receiving their food entitlement in a more dignified and safe manner to just make sure I'm putting a smile on their face. The World Food Program distributes a wide variety of grains, beans, and oils to families in need, as well as a revolutionary product designed to help new and expectant mothers called Super Cereal. It's a highly fortified blended cereal designed to help the immune system and lactation. Fatima has given birth to 14 children, including twins. She's now making super cereal to help her health and the health of her newest child, Faiza. When I take the porridge, I'm able to get breast milk, which I'm able to breastfeed my baby. Shamat Warsame coordinates nutrition for children and mothers in Garissa County. She says that sustainable programs and long-term projects, like those the WFP is running with the support of the church, are saving children. At the end of the day, the whole of Africa is supported. If we don't have children who are severely malnourished, then it's a success for the world. <laughs> the church has also given $10 million to UNICEF and Rotary International to support their efforts to eradicate polio and neonatal tetanus in areas of the Middle East and Africa. On a beautiful autumn day in San Francisco, dozens of volunteers came together in community service. They are just a godsend that has come to us right at the time that we needed it. Here, a one acre patch of land got a much needed irrigation upgrade and the volunteers to complete it. Today, what we're experiencing is individuals across race ethnicities coming together to ensure that everyone in this community has quality access to food. The project is the first of several humanitarian efforts planned for North American cities, born out of a five-year collaboration between the NAACP and the church. Can you guys do that for me? At the direction of church president Russell M. Nelson, the church has pledged $2 million a year over the next three years to fund such projects. When I walked out on and saw all these people and I said, look at the difference that's going to happen in our community because of today's event. Lives will be touched that you don't even know. In Tennessee, the church and the NAACP joined together on a new life-saving program designed to lower infant mortality rates in Shelby County. This partnership is God-ordained and uh, God-inspired. Along with participation by local government and community businesses, the My Baby For Me program focuses on food, knowledge, and hope for expectant mothers and their families. 
we've got resources and people with expertise um, to help with this program. So whether it's breastfeeding, nursing, anxiety, any of those questions that they may have. The program kicked off in late November with the help of Latter-day Saint and community volunteers going door to door to get the word out to those most in need. Thank you all so much for coming out today for My Babies For Me, and we're gonna make this a huge success. Thank you so much. The goal is to expand into other areas of Memphis and beyond over the next few years. In November, about 400 new and expectant mothers gathered in Chicago for a citywide community baby shower held at the Imani Village Community Center on the city's south side. Right, we're from the Chicago Department of Public Health. There, mothers were able to connect with and learn about local resources from prenatal care to mental health services. I've never been to a baby shower like this and it was, it was amazing. The event was organized by Hustle Mommies and the Urban Mom Collective in collaboration with Reverend Dr. Q English and supported by the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. While we say baby shower, it was a mommy shower. It was a mommy shower of love, care, connectivity, village. I definitely felt the sisterhood amongst many of the moms. They felt like they were seen for once. They felt like they had other moms that they were able to connect to for once. Wherever we serve, wherever we are, we can bless and lift. We're all mothers. Women need each other. I am literally blown away by everything we've seen. Oh, that's fantastic. It's beautiful. Celebrating a decade of collaboration that has helped children in need around the world, leaders from UNICEF USA visited Salt Lake City in January, where they toured the church's humanitarian facilities. I hope you'll see a reverence for the dignity of the human soul. Sharon Eubank, Director of Humanitarian Services for the Church, led the UNICEF USA leaders on tours of the Humanitarian Center and Welfare Square. While in Salt Lake, the UNICEF USA leaders also met with the church's presiding bishopric on Temple Square. I saw the church today really living into uh, the mission that Jesus gave to be his hands and feet in our own communities and then around the world. In seeking to follow Jesus Christ's example of caring for those in need, the church released its 2022 annual report. More than $1 billion was provided through more than 3,600 projects during the year in 190 countries and territories. In addition, over 6.3 million volunteer hours were offered. The church has a global mission to assist where it can with the challenges of conflict, hunger, disease, poverty, pandemics, and disaster, including millions of dollars in 2023, to assist with the destructive February earthquakes and tragic loss of lives in Turkey and Syria. When we come back, modern day apostles travel the globe, bringing with them the spirit of unity and messages of peace. We can embrace the gift that the Son of God has given us. All the things that were broken are healed. As he go preach, saying the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Apostle, that's the title Jesus gave to the 12 whom he chose and ordained to be his special witnesses to the world. And just as Christ called and sent his apostles to represent him in the Bible, today his modern apostles are given the same charge, to officiate in the name of the Lord and spread the gospel of Jesus Christ to all nations. President Dallin H. Oaks of the First Presidency ministered in Chicago in mid-February, a city where he practiced law and taught as a professor of law at the University of Chicago. While speaking to local leaders, he provided clarification about the church's support for recent U.S. legislation. Some of our members have expressed concerns that the new national respect for marriage law is in conflict with the church's teachings against same-sex marriage. We see a need to clarify the church's position on that new law. 
At the time the National Respect for Marriage Act was adopted, the Church publicly reaffirmed our Church doctrine approving only marriage between one man and one woman. The focus of the Church's efforts was not on same-sex marriage, but on ensuring the Act contained the necessary protections for religious freedom. For the complete statement dated February 11, 2023, go to newsroom.churchofjesuschrist.org. It was a walk down memory lane as Elder Jeffrey R. Holland of the Quorum of the Twelve Apostles, accompanied by his wife Patricia, visited Europe in November, having served as the Europe North Area President in the 1990s. It's really been wonderful to be home. How are you? So many people that we knew then are still here, still participating. Along with ministering in Finland and Sweden, Elder and Sister Holland were able to visit a small group of Ukrainian refugees in Hanover, Germany. Good. We're just so honored. This is the highlight of my trip. We came here end of March. He'll be all right. It'll be okay. I want you to take heart if you feel that your life is either interrupted or perhaps broken. We can okay. embrace the gift that the Son of God has given us. All the things that were broken are healed. That's worth a hug. <laughs> Building bridges through understanding and shared values was one of the goals of Elder Dieter F. Uchtdorf's ministry to Southeast Asia, where he met with leaders of the Istiklal Mosque in Jakarta. I have a special feeling for Indonesia, how welcoming they are. It's the largest population of Muslim people in the world, and they welcome us. Sister Louise. Very, very well. Good to meet you. Lovely Good to meet to see you. you. In Thailand, Elder Uchtdorf became fast friends with Sister Louise of the Good Shepherd Sisters of Bangkok. At 88 years old, Sister Louise has dedicated her entire life to providing shelter and educational training for women at risk. How can we ever say thank you? Well, you, 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 you say it. thank you every day by serving. <laughs> A humanitarian donation from the church will help build a teaching kitchen to provide vocational training to disadvantaged women. We are all one because all these people are interested in other human beings. Elder David A. Badnar of the Twelve, along with his wife Susan and other senior church leaders, traveled to Central Europe in October on a five-country ministry tour. His ministry began in Geneva, Switzerland, where he met with high-level UN diplomats and representatives of global organizations that collaborate with the church on humanitarian projects. We appreciate the partnerships that we have with you. Elder Bednar spent the majority of his time in spiritual ministry to the people of Austria, Hungary, and Albania. During their time, the Bednar's focus was on the youth of the church. We feel an urgency to help the young people have a solid foundation on the rock of Christ. I think the future is bright here. Three, two, one. Christmas lights are back on at the Washington, D.C. Temple following extensive renovation and the pandemic. Elder Quentin L. Cook was joined by the Ambassador of Singapore to turn on the 400,000 lights on the temple grounds in late November. In many ways, this reflects Singapore's own values of how we pull people together. Members of our faith are committed to doing what we can to break down barriers that prevent God's children from sharing in the peace and goodwill that ought to be a common inheritance for all humankind. Dozens of invited ambassadors, diplomats, and interfaith leaders attended the lighting ceremony, kicking off the church's annual Festival of Lights. Marriage and families are the foundation of society. If we have strong families, we have a strong nation. 
Elder D. Todd Christofferson of the Quorum of the Twelve Apostles and other church leaders traveled to Kinshasa in the Democratic Republic of the Congo in early November to minister to members, visit local humanitarian sites, and meet with interfaith leaders. On Sunday morning, Elder Christofferson also addressed Latter-day Saint youth and young adults in Kinshasa. It's hard to find the words to describe it. So exciting just to see them and to feel the energy that they bring. Following Kinshasa, Elder Christofferson also visited Kenya and Ethiopia. Also in November, Elder Christofferson was present at the World Peace Dome in Pune, India, where a statue honoring the Prophet Joseph Smith was unveiled. This statue joins 54 others representing religious leaders, scientists, and philosophers at the MIT World Peace University. It was a joyful reunion for Elder Neil L. Anderson and his wife Kathy in Brazil. There, they met with missionaries, members, and country leaders in three cities, including the First Lady of Brazil, Rosângela Lula da Silva. Elder Anderson served in the Brazil area presidency from 2001 to 2005. Não somente acreditar em Cristo, mas realmente seguir o Cristo. Elder and Sister Anderson also visited the new Brasilia Temple, which he scheduled to dedicate this September. Bali, a land known for its beauty and now also its belief. The 2022 Group of 20 and its Forum of Religion convened in Indonesia to discuss the world's most pressing problems and how faith or religion can be a catalyst for change. Religion has played a historical role, a traditional role in in pointing people towards good outcomes. Representing the Church of Jesus Christ, Elder Gary E. Stevenson addressed attendees with a message of tolerance, hope, and peace that resonated as he met with leaders from diverse faith traditions. They see us as, as people of faith and recognize that we're devoted people and at the same time loving our neighbors. Elder Garrett W. Gong of the Twelve visited Central America to minister to church members in November. During his ministry, he held a devotional for youth and young adults, expressing the love of Jesus Christ and faith in their futures. Elder Gong also met with government officials, including the president of Costa Rica, Rodrigo Chavez, and the vice president of Panama, Jose Gabriel Carrizo. Elder Ulysses Suarez made an historic visit to the Caribbean in November. After ministering in Puerto Rico, the Apostle and his wife Rosanna traveled to Cuba, marking only the third time an Apostle has visited that country. While there, Elder Suarez met with government and religious leaders. The Suarezes also hosted an interfaith dinner to strengthen friendship and cooperation between the Christian churches operating on the island. Coming up. After two years, Luz de las Naciones returns to the conference center in Salt Lake City. A donation from the church brings light to a Navajo community, and the church's helping hands rally together after Hurricane Ian. Homesteads dot the landscape across northern Moldova, like Diana Melnick's. Diana is proud of her small farm, in particular, her new pig. We are grateful he is doing well, eating well. In Diana's small village of Baroncia, employment opportunities are scarce. There's no work. And living off the land is a matter of survival for many families. But despite the daily challenges, Diana remains optimistic. There are difficulties, but I'm a positive person. Diana is one of many residents in the region who received a boost to their homesteads with either a pig or chickens. This was an enormous amount of support. It's the first time that anybody gives out chickens like this for free. This is all part of an initiative established by the Church World Service with funding from the church's giving machines. 
The Giving Machines are sponsored by The Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. During Christmas time, these bright red vending machines provide a one-stop shop for a variety of charitable causes and organizations. Donors can choose from a wide selection of items, including pigs, goats, chickens, and beehives. The money collected is then distributed to the sponsor organizations and goes towards the itemized donations. Last Christmas, a total of 41,000 chickens were donated, 500 pigs, 4,000 goats, and 4,000 beehives. <laughs> I wish you health in your family. Only the best wishes. From the bottom of my heart, thank you. $6.2 million was donated during the 2022 Christmas season, totaling $22 million donated since 2017. After two years of pandemic measures and months of rehearsals, Luz de las Naciones, Light of the Nations, returned to the conference center in Salt Lake City to celebrate its 20th anniversary bringing music, culture, and lots of dance. You go out there, the lights are on, the crowd's cheering. It's, it's exciting. It's, it's great. I love it. Sponsored by the church, Luz de las Naciones incorporates universal themes of Christ-like love and unity to celebrate the heritage of Latin American countries. This year's theme, Better Together. So I was like, yes, I can recognize my music. <laughs> You feel this community connection when you see something of your country. Cada país tiene su propia cultura y es importante respetar cada cultura y aprender de cada cultura. This COVID has been so long and has made people to uh, be away from each other. And we love to be together. Mis amigos, que Dios nos bendiga. And for those who may have missed the live performance, an on-demand version is now available to stream free of charge. We have an obligation to be good stewards, to pass to the future generations an earth better than we found it. At the Utah Valley University's Why It Matters conference in Orem, yeah, Utah, presiding Bishop Brick member L. Todd Budge highlighted the ways the church is reducing its environmental footprint including water and energy management and sustainable building practices. We have the power within us not only to maintain, but to be co-creators with God in beautifying and replenishing the earth. The three-day academic conference welcomed the global community to discuss the United Nations Sustainable Development Goals. The Navajo Nation's Westwater community sits next to the city of Blanding in southeastern Utah. It's pretty big. It's nice. It's beautiful. Westwater is where Lena Hutchins Lovell's family built their Hogan. But life for the Dine has its challenges. Because we never had electricity, we used flashlights and kerosene lanterns. This is our generator. But it was costing us $20 a day to fill up the gas to last for six hours. Until only recently. In a combined effort, state, county, city, and Navajo Nation leaders came together to extend electricity and clean running water from Blanding into Westwater. One thing can unite us, that is the language of love. The Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints provided $500,000 to the project. It's a small group. But are we our brother's keeper? I think we are. And it doesn't matter whether it's one or two or a thousand. When they are here and we see the need, that's what we need to do. Electricity is now available throughout the community, which sits on about 120 acres. Plans are underway to bring water services this year. For Lena's family, it's a brighter future. So it keeps my kids safe at night. When they come late, it feels good. As the waters receded along Florida's southwest coast, the damage from Hurricane Ian began to surface. And virtually overnight, volunteers answered the call to help. Many of them were helping hands from the church, whose meeting houses became temporary command centers. Anytime that we have a disaster, uh, the church has developed the ability 
to organize very quickly, getting supplies and going out into the neighborhoods to help with the cleanup. It's exciting and it's emotional. It's that human touch that, that is so needed right now. Once on site, volunteers go straight to work, young and old, parents and children. Oh my gosh, it's been so nice, you know, helpful. Because you can't be in five places at one time. <laughs> so that's wonderful. You're angels to me, every one of you. You've got a halo over top of all your heads. You've lost your possessions, and they're all on the curbside. And someone comes and knocks on the door and says, I'm here to help you. That's the reaching out person to person that's going to help this community heal. Since 2009, the church has built a family of mobile apps to help users around the world connect with God through the scriptures, living the gospel, and serving the people of the world. The great thing about technology is it allows us, the church, to greatly expedite the work of salvation, meaning these are not one-off printed digital copies we're trying to get to all parts of the earth. The Book of Mormon app is now available in over 100 languages. The app allows members and missionaries around the world to share the Book of Mormon via text, email, or common personal interactions. With so many people providing internet, it's incumbent upon us to continue to figure out how do we connect with people using electronic means. Hi, welcome to The Friend. Parents and children can now access the church's children's periodical, The Friend Magazine, in an audio format via a new app for Amazon's Alexa. How to Have Joy by President Russell M. Nelson. Launched in English and Spanish, the app offers a selection of articles, stories, and songs from each month's edition. To access the skill, just say, Alexa, open the Friend magazine. With so many voices out there, having an app that will read them, these beautiful stories that are about children their own age, making decisions that bring them closer to the Savior, it will be such a blessing for them. The Member Tools app has grown from a digital directory to a powerful tool for administration in the church around the world. The Member Tools app is going to help uh, local leaders achieve a better efficiency in their work by decreasing the administrative burden, and the intent is to give them more time. The app is currently available in 38 languages. Now he's looking at you. You want to go over the whole thing? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. These are service missionaries of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. Good morning. They share the light of the gospel of Jesus Christ by serving in church organizations and in their communities. At a conference in Las Vegas, attended in person and virtually by nearly 400 service missionaries and their families from Texas to Nevada, they gather to grow spiritually. We are grateful for the chance that we have to lift each other up. Strengthen friendships and further prepare to go forth to serve. Teaching missionaries, it's been said, are his voice and service missionaries are his hands. The number of service missionaries worldwide has grown to nearly 3,000 in 34 countries. Elder Diodato is a service missionary in Rome, Italy. He has autistic spectrum syndrome and shares why he wanted to serve a mission. Each week he serves in his congregation in the Rome, Italy temple and the family search center. Eh, lui ha desiderato di servire fin da quando frequentava la primaria. Siano Diodato ha sempre amato cantare. Lui adesso riesce a fare cose che sono possibili solo tramite l'aiuto del Signore. E lui è il sole. Lui è sempre felice, è sempre positivo e ha tutto questo amore da dare. Come miglior amico Gesù Cristo, lui desiderava servire il suo amico, il suo Salvatore. After serving a teaching mission for six months in Santiago, Chile, health concerns brought Sister Kinney Kinney home to Harriman, Utah. With improved health, she is a service missionary helping the newsroom team in the church communication department. We actually didn't know what a service mission was. That was new to us. Among several assignments, she edits videos for the church's social media accounts. Because of her desire to serve, we were grateful for that tender mercy. I just 
threw myself into it and it's been a great blessing. And I am just grateful to Heavenly Father for everything that he's given me. The passion and the emotions that the character feels. Elder Levitt was set to serve as a teaching missionary. Thank you guys. But with his father's passing, he was called as a service missionary. A great blessing for his mom and his family. I was so happy because that meant I was able to be there for her and be able to help her in struggling times. He serves full time in various ways at the American Heritage Academy in Henderson, Nevada, a school he attended as a youth. <laughs> to be able to watch others progress and to help them with that progression in their lives, to help develop those skills, it's amazing. Anytime that kid takes a task, he fixes it, he's there, 100% serves. That's a lot of running around. <laughs> they have a tremendous number of Christ-like attributes. They are absolutely the most beautiful, wonderful, kind young men and young women that one could ever imagine. And they are called on a mission for the purpose of serving others. When we return on Martin Luther King Jr. Day, Church leaders join forces with the St. Louis community to help feed those in need. This collaboration is really impactful because we know that it's hitting the hearts of people and really meaning to their basic needs. How y'all both doing? Y'all okay? Good to see you both. They have been in line, some of them from, from as early as 6 o'clock this morning, for a food drive that didn't even start until 12 noon. Does our hearts good to help people in need. On a cold and rainy January afternoon in St. Louis, hundreds of volunteers came together at the headquarters of the Urban League of Metropolitan St. Louis for the Martin Luther King Jr. Memorial Tribute Food Drive, where the church donated 40,000 pounds of food. Hello, welcome. I'm going to take your number here. Uh, Kristen Hi, M. Yee and Tracy Y. Browning of the Relief Society and Primary General Presidencies were there to distribute boxes to expectant families. Dr. Martin Luther King's vision was that we'd all be treated as children of God. He felt that, and so do we. We've got pasta sauce and pasta and fish. I think this collaboration is really impactful and meaningful because we know that it's hitting the hearts of people and really meaning to their basic needs. Everyone has been helpful. Everyone is doing their part. They're keeping the dream alive. They're keeping the dream alive. The general presidents of the Relief Society and young women organizations visited Central and Eastern Africa in early March, where they received a warm welcome from local Latter-day Saint women. Isn't this a sweet opportunity that we have on Sundays to worship our Heavenly Father and our Savior, Jesus Christ? It was sort of surreal because I've only ever seen her during general conference giving talks and now she was there, like really there. <laughs> She's really extending the love from the prophet to us and we are totally grateful on it. We are learning much from each one of these women, but more than anything, we are able to see what they are doing and how they're lifting in the kingdom. After ministering to the saints in Nairobi, Presidents Camille and Johnson and Bonnie H. Corden traveled to other regions. President Corden, along with her husband Derek, met with the wife of Kenya's deputy president. Helps them know who they are. And visited a girls' school in Kanale, where the principal is a member of the church. As time went by and we talked to them about the importance of seminary, we have 62 girls. And we started with only three. President Corden traveled to the Congo, where she toured a maternity hospital in Kinshasa, in which the church has been providing donations of life-saving medical equipment. As we walked into the room, we saw new incubators. We saw new equipment that will help save little lives. President Johnson, with her husband Doug, joined a UNICEF team in the drought-stricken areas of northeastern Uganda. This is an effort to go beyond our members to address the needs, the humanitarian needs of the world's children. Thank you. Our future is with these children and their brain development between the ages of zero and five is just critical. Nutrition is critical to that. And if we can save a child, our future is bright. 
the two presidents concluded their Ministry of Africa in early March in the Congo. We've talked to the leaders of the governments that have had a desire to help families. And we have been so impressed with the leaders who want to follow Jesus Christ. It's ministering. As it turns out, it's ministering to the one. In November, Primary General President Susan H. Porter and Michelle D. Craig of the General Young Women Presidency accompanied Area President Elder S. Gifford Nielsen to West Africa, where they visited Ghana, Cote d'Ivoire, and Nigeria. There, the leaders were met with open arms as they greeted church members, missionaries, and students. One of the things I love is their focus on learning and using that knowledge for good in praise of God and Allah. They were also able to visit members of the Muslim faith with whom they discussed shared values and welcomed collaboration between Muslims and Latter-day Saints. Coming up, we'll take you to the dedications, groundbreakings, and announcements of temples around the world. And later, current and former NBA All-Stars take time out to serve others. In the October 2022 General Conference, President Russell M. Nelson announced plans to construct 18 new temples, bringing the worldwide total of in-use or announced Latter-day temples to 300. This latest announcement will bring new temples to Pusan, South Korea, Naga and Santiago, Philippines, Ekit, Nigeria, Chiclayo, Peru, Buenos Aires, City Center, Argentina, Londrina, and Ribado Preto, Brazil, Weiwei Denango, Guatemala, Jacksonville, Florida, Grand Rapids, Michigan, Prosper, Texas, Lone Mountain, Nevada, Tacoma, Washington, and in Mexico, temples in Cuernavaca, Pachuca, Toluca, and Tula. In addition to new temples announced, several newly renovated and completed temples have been dedicated. On October 16th, the Hamilton New Zealand Temple was rededicated by Elder Dieter F. Uchtdorf of the Quorum of the Twelve Apostles following a four-year renovation. The Hamilton New Zealand Temple was originally dedicated in 1958 by President David O. McKay. On November 20th, two temples were dedicated in South America. Elder Dale G. Renland of the Twelve dedicated the Belim Brazil Temple with nearly 850 people in attendance. On the same day, more than 2,000 miles to the west, Elder Quentin L. Cook dedicated the Quito, Ecuador Temple after an October open house that drew over 50,000 visitors. And in the Caribbean, Elder D. Todd Christofferson dedicated the San Juan, Puerto Rico Temple on January 15th. Serving nearly 23,000 members, the San Juan, Puerto Rico Temple is the first in the territory and the third in the Caribbean. In addition to dedications, since October, ground has been broken for temples in Heber Valley, Utah, Willamette Valley, Oregon, Managua, Nicaragua, Miraflores, Guatemala City, Guatemala, and in Torreon and Quiritaro, Mexico. When we return, a first-of-its-kind FSY conference is held for youth in the Middle East. Southern California sees the nativity like never before, and a donation to a community in Zimbabwe brings a new health clinic and a lot of celebration. These stories and more in the news. Roots Tech 2023 returned to Salt Lake City in March for the first time in person in three years. The Family Search event offered special celebrity guest appearances, live music, family history know-how sessions, and a family profile of Elder Garrett W. Gong of the Quorum of the Twelve Apostles and his wife Susan during Family Discovery Day. 
More than 200 teens gathered in Dubai to attend an historic For the Strength of Youth conference in January. This is the first time an FSY conference was held in the Middle East. During the conference, teens participated in a variety of activities designed to strengthen their faith in Jesus Christ. In March, the first presidency of the church welcomed faith and civic leaders from Azerbaijan, led by Islamic religious leader, the Grand Mufti of the Caucasus. President Russell M. Nelson and the Sheikh Ul Islam discussed their faith's shared values. The group also toured the church headquarters, Welfare Square, and Brigham Young University. As the world celebrated the birth of Jesus Christ in Newport Beach, California, the nativity story came to life on the water. At the 114th annual Newport Beach Christmas Boat Parade, Latter-day Saint youth reenacted the nativity aboard a 60-foot yacht as their contribution to the church's Light the World initiative. Wise men still seek him. In Zimbabwe's Nguza district, the community rejoiced with the construction of a new clinic that's putting medical services within reach. The new Mabaleni Clinic will cut the travel distance for 15,000 residents who previously walked some nine to 12 miles to the nearest clinic. Villagers celebrated a donation by the Church of Jesus Christ, which makes the project possible. Hundreds of children and adults have greater independence through the Fundabim Foundation in Guatemala, which recently distributed nearly 600 wheelchairs and other mobility supports donated by the church. The wheelchairs will be provided to patients of Fundabim's 19 rehabilitation centers throughout Guatemala, where physical therapists are trained to help fit each device to the patient's specific needs. A major renovation is underway for a hospital in Cambodia. The Kampung Tom Provincial Hospital will see the renovation of 32 structures in addition to new hospital equipment. Kampong Tom is one of only three referral hospitals in the province. This is the largest humanitarian project the church is undertaking in Cambodia with a $1.5 million donation. This is important to me. To be able to help people that are less fortunate, I think it means a lot. When we come back, the All-Star Game in Salt Lake City brings new volunteers to the Bishop Storehouse and gives NBA players a chance to serve. It's about to feed some families, man. This is pretty awesome. There's no better way to tip off All-Star Weekend than rolling up your sleeves and volunteering to get back to the community that we're in. Nearly 300 volunteers, including NBA All-Star participants, met at the Bishop's Storehouse when the NBA held its annual All-Star Game in Salt Lake City. We're on the line right now, and I'm, I'm putting beef stew into these boxes right now. We're about to feed some families, man. This is pretty awesome. They packed food and hygiene kits for those in need in the area. This is important to me because it, it helps other human beings. You know, it, it helps other people that are in need, and to be able to help you know, people that are less fortunate, I think it means a lot. Each box will feed a family of four for four days. This is Buddy. He's in the three-point shootout tomorrow night. And here he is today at the Bishop Central Storehouse caring for others in need. And I'm grateful for him and all of our friends that we've made with the NBA during this event. Well, if you can help in any impact way, that's helping anybody and uh, put a meal on somebody's table and uh, that goes a long way. The most valuable thing we can give is our time and our service. Being able to help provide food for people throughout Utah and work with such terrific partners has been incredible. And we're just so thrilled to be able to support the excellent work that they do day in and day out to help make communities better and help lift up people that need the help. NBA players included something special in the boxes they prepared. Some delivered to Tabitha's Way Food Pantry in American Fork, Utah. Tyler Hero? Buddy Hild? No way! No way! No, you, you, you guys must be kidding me. Oh. Hand signed <laughs> notes that delighted the families that received them. Look at that car! It just, yeah. Who won't be fun about that? It's just too amazing. I think it's great that they took the time out of their life to help us. Thank you for this, first of all, and I love you, Tyler. <laughs>
This has been the World Report for The Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints, April 2023. To watch The World Report online, visit newsroom.churchofjesuschrist.org. And to watch full-length versions of these stories, go to the Church Newsroom YouTube channel.